with Hut 8 and Foundry quite a while ago. And there was this the, this discussion of moving from Bitcoin mining into AI infrastructure. And it's a fascinating topic because there's a lot of nuance to it. For those that are not familiar with infrastructure, it can be a little bit confusing. You might say, well, it's just computer equipment. Just plug in the AI machines instead of the Bitcoin miners. But it doesn't really work that way because the amount, the type of infrastructure you have for a Bitcoin miner is essentially you know, a decent, basically a reliable internet connection doesn't have to be necessarily fast and then a bunch of power. Now the power part and the reliability of the internet part, those two things are needed for AI infrastructure, but AI infrastructure requires a lot more. It requires things like redundancy to make sure if you lose, let's say a, a hard drive, that there's another hard drive that has that same information on it. So you preserve the data. Um, you're going to need redundancy on the network. So multiple internet connections and those pipes need to be very large because AI and large language models are obviously working with large data sets, which means you need to have a fast and reliable internet connection, which is going to increase, of course, the infrastructure cost and in startup. And in general, you will also need to be rotating out, you know, GPUs quite a bit more often than you know, ASIC miners in general. So the, the, the cost is a lot higher and, you know, it was of the mindset that Foundry was really going to be the one, uh, that didn't want to move into AI. And then hut eight was pushing really hard for AI. And the interesting part is, you know, to my chagrin, I guess, because I was like, it doesn't really make sense for a Bitcoin miner to get into AI, but Maybe I'm wrong because Hut 8 has reported $331 million net income in 2024 while expanding AI infrastructure. So the Bitcoin miner did hold over one or 10,000 Bitcoin at the end of the year last year. Bitcoin mining firm HUD8 took $331 million in net income in 2024, according to the company's latest financial report. The firm benefited significantly from the rise in Bitcoin's price over the year. HUT 8 finished the year with a reserve of 10,171 Bitcoin worth approximately 905 million US dollars at the time of writing. The vast majority of this reserve has been pledged as collateral to purchase more ASIC mining machines. That is an interesting play though. So that's collateral specifically for a, uh, for Bitcoin mining machines, not for Bitcoin. So if, if I had to take a bet here, what we're seeing is thanks to Bitcoin, they can continue to run their AI infrastructure. So it feels like to me, I was correct. And they might have been doing even better if it was purely focused on Bitcoin. But this is a hedge for, of course, the bear markets. So the miner saw a sharp reduction in energy costs with fourth quarter costs per megawatt dropping 30% from the previous year to 3163. While HUD 8 managed roughly 1,020 megawatts at the end of December, it has more than 12,300 megawatts in the pipeline. The company deepened its relationship with Bitmain, one of the largest Bitcoin mining firms in the world. HUD8 secured a co-location deal from Bitmain that is expected to generate $125 million in annual revenue. It is also teaming up with the firm to develop a next generation ASIC miner. HUD8 is increasing its AI infrastructure investments. Its subsidiary, HiRise AI, signed a five-year customer agreement for a GPU as a service. The company also closed a $150 million strategic investment from Co2 to support AI development. The company's stock is down 7.25% on the day, bringing its valuation to $1.5 billion US dollars. Now, of course, if we look at that, just the holding in Bitcoin is worth 905 million. So if the entire company is only worth 1.5 billion and that includes, you know, their running costs, uh, the infrastructure costs, all that sort of stuff. And you take into account the amount of mining machines, et cetera, that also has to be added to this 905 million. It's pretty clear that there's very, very, really relatively small amounts. It's really maybe about a total of $275 million invested into AI and $1.3 billion invested into cryptocurrency mining. So I still think that, you know, 
the cryptocurrency mining is really what's keeping them alive. There was that question earlier um, that essentially um, we, I just got uh, sidetracked by TDIT, but we already addressed that. So, um, you know, we already talked about the price volatility in Bitcoin. Um, so getting back on track, right? Um, I think that for HUT 8, the Bitcoin mining side is why they're being successful, not the AI side. And going back to earlier in the show when somebody was asking when the AI bubble will pop, we haven't got the big players in AI yet. I mean, we sort of do, right? Grok's coming along um, uh, to be in that competition. Maybe it'll be like the Grok, Apple, and a couple others. But there's still a lot of room and space for innovation within AI at the smaller level, especially within the hardware level, right? Um, most of the GPUs as a service projects uh, or businesses are startups. There's not really outside of, you know, working with specifically, you know, NVIDIA in large data centers, like maybe with Amazon or something, there's still a huge uh, GPU as a service hole within the AI space. So from that perspective, you know, I think you're going to see a real need for GPUs as a service at a smaller level, right? So let's, if we look at like cloud, for example, right? You have the big players in cloud. You have, you know, you, you, the Googles, the Microsoft and Amazon, right? But that doesn't fill the whole market because of cost and availability and, and uh, support contracts, et cetera. So there are a lot of other smaller cloud hosting platforms they have found success over the time and are relatively big. So we don't have that fully yet in AI outside of like maybe vast AI, for example. Right. But we will need to see that kind of the, the vulture or the digital ocean version of AI GPUs as a service. And I think there is still some um, availability in that market. Hopefully it ties into crypto. There have been some promising projects, whether it be, you know, uh, Chlor.ai, et cetera, but Vast is really kind of the big dog as far as all that is concerned right now. But there's a lot more, I think, space within AI before we burst a bubble, right? Because we haven't seen the cream rise to the top. Usually the bubble bursts once the cream rises to the top because then it gets heavy on top of that bubble and it bursts it, right? Does that make sense? Like if you look at like, like if you're making a coffee, right? And you're steaming the milk or whatever. And then there's a, it starts out as a bubble. You ever steamed like a coffee or milk for coffee? And it starts out as a bubble. And then as it bubbles up and then foam forms over the bubble and then the bubble pops. That's essentially what has to happen. And it's a great analogy in this particular case because we don't have that foam that's run to the top yet to burst the bubble, meaning we don't have the big successful companies yet. So there's still a lot to build up within that bubble, right? Um, I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. If you would like to see more from this particular episode, take a look up here. Don't forget to also subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support me directly, you can go to sonofatech.locals.com and become a member. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next Tuesday.